I've been searching for something, something never comes, never leads to nothing, nothing satisfies, but I'm getting close, closer to the prize at the end of the road. John Osterlin here with you on Rush Radio, 99.5 WRNO. We're going to get to this story about the uh, young married couple who decided to try to sail around the world on a 36-foot sailboat with their one- and three-year-old children. Didn't make it very long, though. Boat broke down. The one-year-old got sick. The United States Navy had to rescue them. These people insane. We are. Uh, but joining us now on the Charter Communications Hotline, he's our official uh, WWE professional wrestling uh, expert. Uh, fr- he's a friend of the show. He's a friend of ours. He uh, comes on the show sometimes, hanging around with us when we're out somewhere. It's the great uh, Legendary Smiles, Chris Coleman. Again, he uh, he's the author of this song, too, the new Jim Crow. So hip-hop song. We've got the video for the song on YouTube. Hey, so Coleman, I saw you on Twitter last night posing with some of the wrestlers. Let me ask you something. I could not believe, and by the way, great weekend for the city of New Orleans when, when you, you got the 30th anniversary of um, a WrestleMania coming. Yeah, I, I think they estimated gross like $35 million just on tourism alone or something, crazy number like that. I forget exactly what the number is, but it was in a multi-million. Well, we're as good a uh, city, if not the best city in the country when it comes to having a big party, whether it's the Super Bowl, whether it's oh, WrestleMania, yeah. whatever the case may be. We know how to do it. And it was a good good weekend for the city. Um, I told you, Smiles, when I was a kid, I loved uh, wrestling. I was a kid, though. Jimmy Superfly Snooker, Mr. Fuji, Mr. Saito, the Chief J. Strongbro and his brother Giles. Uh, Jules, all of those guys, but but then I grew up. You're 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 an older guy. You really really get into this stuff. And I'm telling well, you, go, what do you why do you, what do you like about it? I think you're looking at it wrong. I think once you found out it was staged, you started looking at it as fake fighting. I look at it as a show, like a circus. You have to look at it as entertainment. Once you start looking at it as like it's like it's kind of like a movie. You know, when you go to a movie, nobody actually dies in real life, and you know that it's, all the fight scenes are choreographed. It's the same thing. It's just live in front of your face. You know, these guys are swinging punches, you know. They're pulling them a little bit. They're actually doing athleticism in front of you. It's like a Tyler Perry stage play with fighting in it. So it's know? the entertainment aspect. That's what I figured before the last break. You know, I'm a big sports fan. I'm a big football fan, basketball fan. Um, but to me, to get to get into this, it's just tough. And so you're looking at it, the athleticism plus the entertainment equals mm-hmm. awesomeness. That's what, that's what right. you're looking at. Like uh, some of the... Some of the characters represent microcosms of different parts of America, and the storyline are actually based. Like right now, there's a guy, his name is Zeb Coulter, and his big deal is about the illegal immigration. So some of the guys that he manages fight uh, wrestlers from different countries. You know, he's talking about how they come in illegally. You know, it's kind of like uh, each wrestler represents a person or a character or archetype of human society. But they're so actors. This, they're, they're actors. Right. You said they're not, right. they're not wrestling someone. They're acting with someone. That's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. They're acting with someone. And they're acting out like there's uh, the guy, Stone Cold, he was famous for flipping off his boss and fighting back. Last night, there's a new guy, uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, fairly new. And his deal is going against the authority. You know how some people feel like, you know, the authority's holding them back. So last night, he had to overcome all the odds against them from the establishment, trying to hold them back. So it's really like a microcosm of different personalities. And you get to see it live in your face and they fight it out. You know, kind of like... <laughs> well, Smiles, I'm going to ask you, because I, I, I popped on the Twitter last night, and uh-huh. people are going berserk when The Undertaker got beat by, uh-huh. by the former mixed martial arts guy, uh, 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 Brock, Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Now, now imagine this, John. It was 75,000 people in the Superdome, 75,000, and everyone was stunned silent at that moment. No, like It was complete quiet in the Superdome with that many people. That's actually historic. Now, there's a phrase called breaking the fourth wall. That means, you know, we start talking about wrestling as a behind-the-scenes aspect. And the reason it was so monumental last night, because it kind of shows that uh, the WWE is about to change the guard. A lot of fresh faces are about He's about 50 the... years old. How real is it? The guy's almost 50, and he's never lost? <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, yeah, exactly. So he had to retire at some point. So it's kind of like it's, you're sad to see him go with the you're happy. You know, I'm glad that he chose New Orleans as the city to actually have his first WrestleMania loss, because he was doing this for 21 years straight. 21 WrestleManias, he came out victorious. So I guess last night he finally uh, decided to take that one loss, and it happened in New Orleans, which will be uh, simpatico with for the rest of WWE history. You know? well, well, Smiles, look, but the, 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 besides the fact that scripted bothers me, I bet you he's not really even an undertaker. That bothers me, too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't believe I, I so you're saying it was as quiet in the Superdome last night as let's say if the Saints were playing there in a playoff game, it was an overtime, 
mm-hmm. and Drew Brees throws a ball that gets intercepted by the other team, and the guy runs it all the way back for a touchdown. No, to that's win the not game. quiet because they'll, they'll cheer and they'll, I mean they'll boo. You know, this was, when I say quiet, I mean absolute silence. Huh. You'll have to see the encore. Even people that was uh, rooting for Brock Lesnar was even shocked, and they were quiet for a little while. It was actual stunned silence at that moment. That was a very historic moment. Am I wrong? I am, am I wrong per capita? Because we know black guys, you're 13% of the country. Do more black guys get into this than white guys per capita? No. no. Last night's WrestleMania was broadcast in 20 different languages in 100 different countries. The guy behind me was from Germany. If you see the... Uh, Nine. The, yeah, yeah, they had a Swiss guy. If you see the crowd, you'll see Canadian flags, British flags. You'll see Mexican flags. So it's actually worldwide. It's bigger than the Super Bowl, if you really want to be honest, because it's worldwide. You know, the Super Bowl is just an American event. But uh, WrestleMania is actually worldwide simultaneously. I mean, a hundred different countries. I know, I know it's big world. My question was, though, when you looked around, was there more, was more than 13% of the crowd in, in that Superdome last night black? No. I don't even think more than uh, 50% of the crowd was American. I mean, huh. that's how international it is. That's like true. I think the majority of the crowd was actually from other countries. I don't really think the majority was American. You know, That's you got to you got to give Vince McMahon credit. When I was younger, even before I was born, these guys were wrestling in high school gyms. They were wrestling in high school gyms, dude, for probably like thirty, forty, fifty bucks a night. And now you look what it is: seventy five thousand people show up at the Superdome for their annual WrestleMania. It's something else. Right. And I'm glad Vince McMahon trusted New Orleans to have such a monumental WrestleMania because it was a change in the guard. That was the first WrestleMania where he allowed new faces and new names that you probably never heard of, like Antonio Cesaro, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose. These guys are all Of course, I've never heard of them. <laughs> of course not. But they carried the show last night. In past WrestleManias, they have to get like old, uh, familiar names like the Rock and Stone Cold to come carry it for the attraction. But last night at WrestleMania, they actually let the new guys carry the show. Well, Smiles, I- last week you were up here one day, and a wrestler mm-hmm. and one of the fake refs were, were here, and you got your picture taken. It was you, me, and then the belt. You had a belt, and then you sent out a Twitter or a Facebook to John Cena, the wrestler, saying, hey, come and get it. What are you, yeah. challenging John Cena? You? Yes, I am. Yes, I am, because uh, he's also a rapper. So I could have been, he could have wrestled, he could have uh, challenged me in wrestling, arm wrestling, or he could challenge me in a battle rap, whatever he wants but to do. But your smiles, you're about as big as John Cena's right leg. <laughs> I know I am, but that's why I have to use tactics. I have to be smarter than him. I can't just beat him with brawn. I have to use brains and wit and strategy. It can be done. It can be done. Because when you put that picture on the Facebook, I got underneath there, I said, John Cena, that's all him. I even though I'm in this picture, <laughs> I'm not asking you to come down here. <laughs> hey, smiles, it's always a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. All right, then, John, thanks. There is Chris Coleman, the legendary Smiles. He's all over the place. He's on our Facebook page, you see him. He's on Twitter. He's on YouTube. He's everywhere. All right, um, if you're on hold, I see you. I'll get to you next, I promise. The wrestling, did you get into it? And coming up, what about these parents that had to get rescued by the United States Navy because they tried sailing around the world? Their one-year-old got sick. Their boat fell apart. They're insane, right? I'm John Osterland on Rush Radio 99.5 WRNO. Unchained like Django, he can talk about the issues and play racial bingo. There's news, traffic, midgets, monkey songs.